Today we'll look at how NX Structure Designer can accelerate finite element beam model creation in SimCenter 3D. We can begin with geometry from any source. It doesn't have to be a native NX PRT file. So for this example, we'll import data from a step file. Once we've imported the data, we can enter the Structure Designer application and create a new structure. We'll need to define an up direction and a horizontal direction. We'll take the defaults and you can see it creates a new component file in the top level assembly. This one we asked to be named Structure 00. Now since we're in a separate component file we need to get some reference geometry to begin creating our structure so we'll wave link in some of the bodies and we'll reference those in the definition of our frame. So since we have some rounded corners on these uh, structural sections what we'll do is we'll select an intersection point to get the correct location for our frame and we'll do that intersection point in all three locations and this will create our overall outer section of our frame. So we'll get our last intersection point here. All right, so now that we have our, our max overall frame, we can start to create some of the interior components. So an easy way to do that will be to copy these curves up to our mid supports. And for the diagonals, what we can do is just create a line. And these curves are just specifying our overall frame. In just a moment, we'll specify some members, which will define more accurately exactly what this frame is that we're creating. So here we'll do the uprights next. And you can see those uprights are made of an angle where most of the rest of the sections are box, rect uh, box square sections. And we know that the uh, structural steel size is 80 millimeters. So to specify the members, we'll go into that structure 00 part that we created. We'll hide the solids that we had created as our reference geometry. And we'll go ahead and select all of the curves that we specified to create our frame. And then we'll specify what our cross section is, our material, and our size. We know we wanted 80. We'll go for the two millimeter thick aluminum square tube. Right now there's a couple here that are not square tube. Those are angles. So I'll deselect those holding down the shift key to deselect. And here it creates, not only creates our square tube sections, but also will trim up all of the pieces to the correct length. And it also, you can see, miters the corners. Uh, you can also change the corner definition, but that will not be covered in this demonstration. So here, comparing it to the original structure, you can see we're off by a little bit. So let's go ahead and edit those members that were off by a little bit, and we'll select an alternate origin. We've got a nice, uh, very easy to understand utility here, selecting one of nine points to specify a new origin. So we want that to be going right down the center of the section, not along the corner. 
So making that change is very easy and it updates the trimming on that member. So we'll do the same thing on the other side, pick that midpoint on the side for the specification of the alternate origin. All right, and lastly, we'll go ahead and create our um, angle sections. This will be an angle equal, specify aluminum, and we want an 80 by 80 by 3. And that looks like it matches perfectly and it's in the right, the right location. We could uh, flop the uh, the angle to be uh, in a different orientation. Uh, we can reflect it about X. It looks like it's in the right location originally. So we'll go ahead and accept that. And now for our other one, we can see that that one does need to be reflected about the X direction. All right, so now our frame is uh, correctly specified. What we'll do next is create our finite element model. We'll start with the beam preparation. And what this will do is it will create a new component in our structure 00. So we'll go ahead and make that our work and display part, opening it in the window. And from there, we'll create our simulation models in SimCenter 3D. Here, we need to make sure we select sketch curves because that's uh, what we need for the beam mesh automation to work. And we'll create a real eigenvalue free free modal solution. Now that we've uh, created our simulation models, we'll execute the beam mesh automation. Here it's very easy. We'll just box select all of the curves, select an element size, and OK. And this not only creates the mesh, but also assigns all of the physical properties, the material specification and the cross-section specification for all of the meshes. So here you can see the cross section was created and the material was specified correctly with, as aluminum. And not only that, but also the offsets were correctly applied as well. So if we take a look at the mesh associated data, you can see the offset in end A and end B are all correct to specify the cross section in the correct location relative to the beam mesh. So we are run ready. Uh, if we had any loads or constraints, we could apply them. But since we're doing a free free modal, we'll go ahead and solve. And here I'm not pausing the movie. You can see in real time that it solves in about a second. And then we can review the results. So here our first flexible mode is mode number seven. And we can get a stick representation of the beam model results. If we'd like a solid representation, we can display the solid as well. And we can animate those results. All right, so there's the first flexible mode. You can see that's at 50 hertz. You can look at the next flexible mode. And the third and fourth modes. All right, so that looks good. Um, what we'll do next is make a change to the beam model. And we can do that by simply changing the curves that we created to define the structure. So here what we'll do is just edit one of the curves here. And I'll change one of the endpoints to go from the corner instead to the midpoint. All 
All right, now once we've made that change, all we need to do is go back to our beam mesh uh, preparation, beam model preparation in the structure manager, and hit update. And then we can go to our FEM. And you can see that there is an update pending there as well. We'll go ahead and update. And it updates the beam model. You can see that uh, because it divided one of the curves in half and uh, joined the, the ends, we have another uh, curve to mesh with our beam mesh automation. But you can see that's very quick and easy and automatically inherits the material and the cross section and the offsets for us so that we're ready to run again to evaluate our design change. So here I'll clone the solution so that we can retain the original results and then view the new model side by side with the original. So here we'll get a side by side view and we'll put the original results in the view on the left and our updated results in the view on the right. We'll go ahead and synchronize our views so that when we ro rotate or pan or zoom on one it will do the same on the other. And here you can see we have uh, changed the first mode frequency from 50 hertz originally to 48 hertz or 49 hertz by making that change to the structure. And that concludes the demonstration.